Hello guys, today I'm just making a special video where we are testing the tool called ChatGPT. So we're going to check whether ChatGPT can solve a physics related question that is based on the concept of Suvat equations. So on the right, you guys can see that we have a question already presented to us. It is a question related to Suvat equations. So I've just drawn a diagram. Now I know that ChatGPT currently doesn't read um, diagrams yet. So we can just write the question in terms of text-based uh, input. And I've also written down the solution. So we can cross-check what ChatGPT's solution has given to us. So we can see whether ChatGPT can actually solve, like let's say a physics-related question like this. So this is just for fun purposes only. So if you guys have enjoyed the video, please do a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. And uh, yeah, let's start with the video. All right, so we're just gonna say hello to ChatGPT at first. So we're just gonna say hello. We're just gonna test the software. Okay, so it's responding. Hello, how can I help you today? Okay, so the first thing we're just gonna ask: Do you know? Do you know about Suvat equations? We're just gonna ask the software or the tool in this case whether it knows about Suvat equations. So we're just going to see the AI response to it. So it's saying, yes, I am familiar with the equations known as Suvat equations. They are a set of five equations that describe the motion of an object under constant acceleration. The five equations are, okay, so it's giving us the five equations of Suvat, and it's also listing down the variables of each one of them. And um, it's explaining the, um, the first equation it's explaining the second equation and the third equation currently it's running okay the fourth equation so it's giving us a detailed explanation of what the suvat equations are i just asked it about what suvat equations are and it's perfectly explaining the, what the concept of suvat equations are um in terms of velocity and speed Okay, so now it's finally asking, let me know if you have any other question or how do you want to utilize these equations. So it's asking us, how, how do we want to ask, let's say, how we're going to ask a question in this case. So I'm just going to write down, I have a question. I have a physics question related to the concept of Suvat equations. So we're just going to test the software or the tool in this case. So I have a physics question related to the concept of Suvat equations. So it's saying, sure, I'd be happy to help you with your physics question. What's a question? And what specific Suvat equations does it involve? So now the AI is asking us what specific Suvat equations. So I'm just going to write here, here's the question. So now we're finally getting into the question. Here's the question. So we know that a tennis ball, I'm just going to read this question to you guys as well. A tennis ball, for those who study physics, they know, I think they'll be able to solve this type of question. You guys can also give it a try. So here's the question. A tennis ball is served horizontally as shown in the diagram. So we don't need to mention that it's served horizontally since the AI doesn't read the diagrams yet. So the bottom of the ball is, let's say, 2.76 meters above the ground. So now I'm giving the AI the question so that it'll be able to answer it above the ground and a horizontal and a horizontal distance of about typing speed distance of about 20 meters from the from the net okay so the top the top of the net is 1.08 meters above the ground above the ground assume that air resistance so we're giving a clue to the AI that air resistance is negligible so in the meaning that you don't need to use air resistance or no need to consider air resistance in this type of question so we're free to use it so it's negligible in this question okay in this question so we're not showing it the diagram since the question itself specifies it properly so we have to show show that the time taken the time taken for the for the bottom of the ball to fall to 1.08 meters above above the ground is approximately approximately 0 0.6 seconds so we're asking the ai or let's say in the software or the tool in this case to solve a solution 
using one of the SUVAD equations and to show that the time taken is approximately 0 0.6 seconds. So this is really going to test the AI to use a certain equation where it has to think to use the values or the correct equation in this case that involves the distance and how to correctly solve this. So we're going to send this and see how fast this thing responds. Oh wow, it, it just responds pretty quick. So it's saying to solve this problem we can use the equation for vertical motion under constant acceleration. So it's mentioning s is equal to ut plus half a t squared. The acceleration in this case is the acceleration due to gravity which is approximately 9.8 meters per second squ squared going downwards. We can assume that the vertical velocity of the ball is zero when it passes the top of the net. Since we know the distance traveled, the final velocity and the acceleration, we can use the equation to solve for t. Now it's uh, just running, so it's given s is equal to half g t squared, and we know that s is equivalent to 1.08 minus 2.76, which is equivalent to minus 1.68 meters. Okay, pretty good actually. The time is the square root of 2s divided by g, where g is equivalent to 9.8 meters per second, so it's doing a pretty good job. Okay, we can see that the time shown here is equivalent to the square root of negative. Okay, so the thing is, they can't take a square root of a negative number in this case. So let's say, let, let me just test this. If we use our calculator and do a square root of negative 0 0.342, that's going to give a math error. So the software, I think the tool has to understand that taking a square root of a negative number decimal in this case is going to be undefined. Now it's saying that lastly, it's saying that this approximate answer tells us that the time taken for the ball to fall from the top of the net to the point 1.08 meters above the ground is 0 0.6 seconds. Since the ball is served horizontally, the horizontal distance and the time taken for the ball to reach the net is approximately the same. Okay. As you can see that this is only an approximation because air resistance is not negligible and depend on how fast the ball is traveling so it can increase the time taken for the ball to reach the net. So after looking at this response and this answer, it's pretty impressive what the AI can do and how it actually solved it and got some parts of it right. So it's not fully correct though. So now we're going to get to the part where I'm going to show you how I solved this question. So what I've done is I've listed down uh, by the way, look to the right. So in the um, solution which I've made, uh, S is equal to half GT square. So that's one of the formulas we just list down just to see whether it matches this question. Then we calculate S. S just represents the distance. So we're just measuring the, um, we're just finding out the distance. So what I've done is I've done 2.76 meters minus 1.08 meters, which gives you an equivalency of 1.68 meters. Now if you look to the left hand side, the AI, uh, ChatGPT, has done a pretty good job. It, they have given the value 1.68 meters. However, this is given as a negative value. Since it's negative, I think that's a reason why the ChatGPT should not take, let's say, the distance in terms of negative numbers. Distance is always positive, right? So it really depends on the direction. Then I've written down the one of the SUVAD equations, which is S equivalent to UT plus half AT squared. Now you got to give it to this that it's got the the formula right for one of the SUVAD equations mentioned here. So we would give a point to that as well. So it's done a good job analyzing that. And um, overall, if you look, initial velocity is zero, and you do half of 9.81 times t square, and it's listed down the gravitational field strength, which is 9.8. Um, it's pretty impressive as well. And we are taking, we're rearranging the equation on the, on the right hand side. We're making t the subject of the formula since we have to show that the time is approximately 0 0.6 seconds. So we do a square root of 1.68 times 2. So 1.68 times 2, that's correctly 3.36. And the software, I mean, the tool has got it right. It's 3.36 divided by 9.81 which has given us an answer of roughly about 0 0.585 seconds. So it has not shown 0 0.585 seconds though, but that's okay. So it's given us a final answer of 0 0.6. So by comparing both these responses of both the AIs and the working that I've done here, 
the AI has done a really good job in actually answering this question, but not all of the parts are right, except like some, for instance, let's say the distance here, negative and uh, square root of a negative number. But overall, I feel that ChatGPT has done a really good job actually in answering this question based on based on information that it has known previously. So it's pretty impressive the way it's responded quickly. And uh, yeah, should you use this for physics? Um, that's a question. You guys can use this for physics as a reference point, but do have other references as well, just in case to confirm what ChatGPT's answers are. But overall, uh, ChatGPT has done a really good job in answering this question. So let's just finish the video by saying this, thanks. All right, so this seems to be the end of all the questions um, of the video, actually. It's been, uh, it's the end of the video. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Channel real helps a lot. And do comment below on what your thoughts are about this video, whether it was interesting or not. And what do you guys think about the tool, ChatGPT, and whether it can solve physics questions. You guys should try it out as well. Just put your physics questions out there and just check whether this is getting it right. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. All right. Bye, guys.